Hi there Berries, my name is Bizzleberry and I'm a support main in League of Legends. This is my tier list into season 9.4. Hopefully this tier list will give you a good idea of what to play into solo queue. Um, as always, this tier list is of my own opinion and my own experiences in solo queue and what hopefully uh, it will do to improve your solo queue game. Um, I know other tier lists may vary slightly or a lot from what I choose, but um, I feel like this tier list, apart from a couple of exceptions that I will make clear when going through the champions, uh, can be used no matter what your ELO is, whether you're Iron or Challenger, um, this tier list will be relevant to you and I will explain um, in more detail, more for like tier 3, tier 2 and tier 1, um, I'll go into more in-depth uh, information in, into those. But um, yeah, generally in this tier list, you want to stick to the tier two and the tier one in this list. Uh, anything tier three can be played in some extreme situations, um, but anything in tier four or tier five, I personally wouldn't um, really bother if you really want to climb in soda queue to gain LP. I hope season nine has been treating you okay so far, and there were a few changes since my last video. So the last tier list I made was in 9.1. Um, there aren't too many changes, there are a couple of changes um, on a few champions, but overall in the whole grand scheme of things, um, I think my tier list has really stood up to time. So um, hopefully this video will be a lot shorter than the previous one. I'm going to aim for about 20 minutes and um, if you do want that extra in-depth information on the weaker champions, then you will be able to look at the video that I'll link at the end. So, as usual in tier 5, everything there is pretty much useless in solo queue right now, including people's uh, favourites such as Tarek, Nautilus, and Tom Kench. Those have not received, um, Tarek and Tom Kench in particular have not received any buffs since they uh, have been target nerfed because of professional play. So, they're still at the bottom. And Nautilus, he's only okay with a Kaiser. But generally, he is like he doesn't do any damage at all. His CC is good, but his no damage at all makes it feel really bad in solo queue when you're the one going in and engaging and getting no reward for it whatsoever. Um, so on that list, there is Zoe, Maokai, Malzahar, Tarek, Nautilus, Tom Kench, Cyan, Ivan, Annie, Nunu, Anivia, and Nico. There you go. Just proving that Anivia is there, just uh, because my face is uh, hiding it. So in tier 4, we have Shen, Fiddlesticks, Lux, Janna, Blitzcrank, Velkoz, Gragas, Rakan, and Teemo. Uh, I did have Teemo in tier 3. Um, the main reason why I've nudged him down is that he does do pretty well and is very fun, actually, in extreme cases. But I feel like extreme cases um, for tier 3... Uh, is probably a little bit too much. Um, I've been finding a lot of success when playing Teemo when you're against the Janna support because it feels like you can kind of do whatever you like. Um, don't play Teemo into AoE bot side because otherwise they'll poke you out of your brush. But if you're not playing anything into that, then the blind is particularly strong against AD carries and he does a lot of damage with like a Leandre's Wireless combo or with like a Nash's Tooth uh, in the round of the mid game. And his, yeah, Shumes are really powerful. Blind. I've soloed 80, 80 carries before as a team of support um, just because of the blind like on Draven and things like that. So if you're playing against an auto-attacking 80 carry like that um, with generally a shorter range like a Lucian or a Draven, uh, can kind of work on Quinn, but the Q will still hurt you quite a bit. Um, but uh, those are the sort of champions you're looking at playing when um, you are thinking about doing a team of support. Rakan got massively nerfed. I believe it was 9.2, but it was even 9.2 or 9.3, where they made his ulti really, really slow um, in terms of his engage, sorry. So his W engage was really slow, uh, is really slow. So um, engaging as Rakan right now is near impossible, in my opinion. So it's really super obvious when you're doing that, and especially when you're in Plat Plus, it's... Um, it's extremely easy to telegraph. I think I've seen one person play Rakan this entire entire time since he's been nerfed. So yeah, 
it um everyone's very upset about how he is headed um the only reason why he's not tier five is because if you do manage to still engage with your ulti and do a w knock up then it can still be quite strong but even more emphasis on being able to engage and it's uh it's harder to do so as well so you have to get quite creative on your engages to better pull that off Jana still tier four. Sorry, Jana mains. Uh, let me know in the comments section below if you think I'm wrong with this one still. But um, yeah, I mean, I've seen a couple of different variations of builds on Jana lately. Uh, the most common one being maxing W or getting a lot of points in W and going arcane comet. Uh, annoying harassment in lane could maybe peel off with the new AD carry uh, crit changes um, and keep a couple of the more squishy ones alive with uh, with the peel. But then you are like hoping that your AD carry is going to carry you effectively uh, through later stages of the game which I don't feel like is a good thing to rely on in solo queue especially if you're in lower ELO you're looking into getting more control for yourself and being able to carry the lane that way so yeah Janna uh, not really a champion that I would recommend in solo queue at the moment but if you do uh, definitely look into that W Arcane Comet build uh, Blitzcrank is still always a scary one, I know for particular a lot of people um, never pick Blitzcrank if you don't know what the enemy uh, has. Blitzcrank can always be scary during the laning phase, but overall, if you're paying attention, not making any stupid mistakes, um, you should be doing fine against Blitzcrank, honestly. Um, you can counter pick the Blitzcrank pick very easily with your AD carry. You can take things like Siva. You could take the extreme route and go Morgana. Um, but any tank, um, other tank will also cause issues for Blitzcrank from Leona to Brom. So, and even Orn. I know Orn's on tier 3 above, and I'll talk about him a little bit more shortly. But Orn is another option that you have to counter a hard engage like a Blitzcrank. So on the tier 4 you've got Shen, Fiddle, Lux, Janna, Blitzcrank, Velkaz, Gragas, Rakan and Teemo. Nothing too exotic there. Um, but we'll move up into uh, tier 3. Tier 3 you've got the Xerath, the Poppy, the Bard, Morgana, Alistair, Orn, Lulu, Vagar, Karma and Jarvan. So I believe I had Vega in tier 2 and Jarvan in tier 2. Um, I myself have been playing those champions a lot less recently. Um, the main issue with both of them is that your AD carry will be very salty if you take those picks, even if you believe they are viable. Um, I think m mentality in Soda Q now has become huge, like way more than it's ever been. Um, players being tilted feels like this season in particular has got pretty bad um, I'm not too sure what it's like on NA feel free to let me know in the comments uh, down below especially with the new rank changes and the splashing of LP but I know a lot of people are unhappy about that and I feel like it's causing a lot more tension in Soda Q lately and there's also been issues with LP gains and things like that in, uh, in Diamond Plus as well which has caused a lot of aggravation including um, if you get really high ELO on, say, the Russian servers, which are deemed as easier, then they transfer over to EU West. You get to keep that uh, your matchmaking rating um, over from the Russian servers. So it's been causing a lot of aggravation. And to be honest, it's been very unpleasant to play with. And there's been lots of reports going on down as well. So that's just, uh, that's, yeah, it's just been really rough in Serdic at the moment. Um, so... Yeah, uh, anything you can not to do, tilt your teammates in challenge machine selection is uh, probably for the best. So Jarvan and Vega, I've been honestly avoiding playing them, even though I do feel like they are decent. Um, even Jarvan was actually recently picked up in the LCK, I believe, in professional play. Um, I haven't actually seen that game, but um, I did hear that they won, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, it's... Your teammates go cuckoo when they see uh, unusual picks, for sure. Now, um, think champion picks here that the the more major type picks, like the Karma and the Xerath, you might see more frequently. Karma's been picked a lot more in Sodoku recently. Um, I don't know if it's because of other people's content. Uh, tier lists may be encouraging or not. But the problem I find with Karma 
is that she has a good laning phase for sure. Mantra Q, laning phase damage is decent. Um, you can also try and sustain yourself with a Mantra W as well. But honestly, overall, yes, her laning phase is strong, similar to like, you know, Alistair's laning phase is strong. Um, once it gets to like mid game for both of those champions, it just feels really bad. It just genuinely feels really, really bad. Um, the damage is not enough and the utility is not enough. So it's like it's, she turns into like a, a high bridge mage enchanter and honestly it just feels really bad uh, in my opinion at least anyway but feel free to let me know down below as well. Um, Lulu, you would think she would be better with the current meta but honestly she's better with on hit AD carries. So if they, you know, Kog'Maw for example is one of the big on hit AD carries and she does really well with Kog'Maw but Kog'Maw is not meta still. So if she is quite largely tied to Kog'Maw in Power Spike, um, Vayne as well, similar in Kaiser or two other hyper carries that you could maybe play uh, Lulu with. Um, she by, she does have her uses for sure. Her harassment in any phase is definitely weaker um, this season than other seasons, but her polymorph is incredibly strong. So if they have like a Cassadin, someone that gets around really, 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 really quickly, um, a polymorph is extremely strong in tying someone down um, for enough time for your team to lock them down. But apart from that, it's really hard to recommend. Um, definitely somewhere like if I had to put her exactly in a tier, it would be like 2.5. She's definitely usable, but I wouldn't really encourage it because there are there are better enchanter supports that you can play that are not only decent in laning phase, but also decent throughout the entire game. So yeah, it's kind of a shame. Hopefully she will, I would like to see her get some sort of like minor damage buff in lane. But I, I think that if they do that, then she'll suddenly like become, there's a fine line between where she is right now and her being tier one. And I don't know if they can nudge her towards tier two, which would, which would um be my preference. But here we are. So Orn, we, we talked about briefly earlier, he can be played against tank supports like the Blitzcrank and Iliona and a Thresh. The W makes it so that you can stand, literally stand in front of your AD carry and block that CC coming through. Um, you'll still take the damage though. The best thing about Orn is his CC. Um, the damage is kind of, it's respectable um, if you get into that position, but um, his CC is amazing. The only thing I'd recommend is not playing him into range. You need to be able to engage cleanly, which means they need to be nearer to you. Um, so being able to do a Q, pillar, E, knock up or, or your ulti does require them to be a bit nearer you ideally to, for you to be able to land that CC so do that bear that in mind when playing but he's definitely as viable just don't expect to be able to use his passive um, unless the game goes on for 35 minutes plus because yeah as we all know supports don't really get that much XP throughout the game now let's talk about Morgana. Uh, Morgana is tier three. I know she's getting a very minor rework next possible patch in 9.5. And I hear that her W might have grounding. Now, if she gets grounding on her W, that actually makes her a lot more viable, but then she immediately goes into like tier two, tier one territory. Grounding is very, very strong. So grounding is similar to like the Cassiopeia Miasma. So you won't be able to use flash or dashes through. And if that comes through on Morgana, she will be a lot stronger than she currently is. And she's getting a visual update. Woo. Um, but other than that, there's nothing really too much to talk about currently right now. But if she does get grounding on her W and I haven't made a tier list to, um, for her, then she is definitely going to be stronger. But right now, before she's been changed, um, okay, tier three, you can pick a blind pick, a blind pick if you really want to and you feel comfortable on her. Um, Bard, I, item build troubles and things, he's kind of derpy, but uh, yeah, he, he can still be played and still, and Zeref is probably the highest DPS mage on as a support if you do get ahead, um, but he is incredibly squishy, so it's extremely high risk, high reward champion, but you can still play Zeref, um for sure. All right, pinning up to tier two. Um, a lot of the champions that you will always sort of see in solo queue now at this point. So we've got Pike, Thresh, Bra uh, Brahm, Brand, Zillion, and Sona. Now, okay, I'm just going to state this clear right now. 
pike and thrash i would not recommend in lower elos um, pike is probably the hardest support to play on this list so if you are below gold i really wouldn't recommend playing it because honestly in the, the kindest way possible your mechanics probably are not ready for that um, if you are looking to want to play pike try and climb on a thresh or a leona first um just get that out there straight away um thresh you will have problems he can be played in low elos but people won't click your lanterns luckily his kit is still good in keep q and e yes his q got nerfed on terms of cooldown um, on the earlier stages of the game so you're more likely to put five points in queue earlier just to get that cooldown back down again but he is still a very strong champion just because he can his flay his it can stop dashes his q his hook is incredibly powerful and his ult is really strong and if people do click your lanterns then uh, you're very lucky you're very very lucky brom that might surprise people as tier two um I feel like the way the bot lane is, is going, I know Lucian received um, a mana increase on his W and the damage has been slightly reduced, but I don't think that's going to do too much to Lucian. I think he's still going to be very strong. Um, another hidden OP champion, I would say, is Tristana. She's very good for early. Um, basically, Brom gives you a lot of security in the fact that um, he can prevent the enemy carry from snowballing or even getting any kills um, at all with your wall. With the sort of champions that have been played a lot as well on bot side, like Ezreal and Lucian and Kaiser and a lot of fast auto-attacking champions, Braum becomes more relevant as well because it means that his passive is much more easily stacked up. Uh, so if you are able to fully utilize his kit, yes, the laning phase will be slower. Yes, you have to go Relic Shield, lovely item. Um, but if you're okay with playing like a slower paced style, I th honestly feel like Brom is the new Janna. So if you were a Janna main, especially in season eight, season seven, and you like that protection style and you still want to like be relevant, <laughs> I know I'm being brutal. Sorry, Janna mains. Um, Brom is probably the next thing you should look to because it's very similar to the protection that Janna can bring and delay long fights and he has peel things as well and an actual decent engage potential there as well especially with the stun on the passive so definitely look at Brom um, with those fast the auto attacking champions. Brand I still feel like he's um, he's got really good damage still um i think that he is a clear second in mage so if mage support you still can play brand for sure just only go oblivion orb and some Merlinomicon if you need a Merlinomicon. otherwise skip the oblivion orb go straight to leandries into rylai's crystal scepter or avoid stuff and and go that way um you'll have some decent games still and that can also be played in any elo Zillion is a new one I put into tier 2. I feel like with the status that AD carries are becoming into... They, they have just got flat out stronger. So the, the the higher chance you can keep them alive, you can speed them up as well. Um, and also revive them or revive anyone on your team. Because that's the other, other option as well. The thing is with like Lulu, her W... Yes, it gives people movement speed, but it gives them attack speed. Whereas Zillion can also give them movement speed, but he can revive anyone on the team. So it doesn't really matter who you speed up, and you can also speed up two people at the same time as well, including yourself. So he's basically a slightly less shieldy um, Lulu, but more damage than Lulu, and a couple of more tricks up his sleeve, and a hard a decent strong hard cc that is also aoe if you can pull that off so yeah when he's 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 decent right now just very squishy obviously in lane um but uh if you are looking forward to looking for a utility type mage um and you enjoyed playing lulu i would suggest Zillion. sona if you're just coming into Soda queue or into League and or into the support role and you're not really too sure what to play, Sona is a really good starting point, um, starting champion to play in Soda queue, um, for sure. So you, um, there's no skill shots really. Um, 
only on her ultimate. Uh, her base value is okay. She's just very squishy. Um, just, you know, when you're going into harassment, make sure you're not making too many mis mistakes and you should be fine. Her healing skill is quite nice throughout the game. Um, especially with the AD carry meta coming through, Ardent Sensor is, you know, she's really good at Ardent Sensor. She can give everyone the Ardent Sensor buff. So, really solid champion. Um, you don't really need to think too much. Like, no offense. <laughs> no offense. You don't really need to think too much in regards to how to play her. But, um, yeah, I I wouldn't necessarily play her in super high elo. You should be looking more towards the tier ones I'm about to go over, but she is a solid champion to learn how to support, especially in the enchanter role. Right, we're speeding on to tier one. So straight to tier one, we have Zyra, Soraka, Nami, and Leona. Um, you would probably be seeing me a lot uh, lately, uh, especially in videos on YouTube, uh, Zyra, Soraka, and Nami in particular. Um, Zyra is very, very, very strong right now. Um, her plant damage nerf has cost me a couple of kills, ironically. So her plant damage got nerfed last patch in 9.3. Um, I think it was 4 to 5-ish damage um, reduction on the plant damage, which has cost me a couple of kills, which sucks. But she is still very, very strong in solo queue. Incredibly um, good in lane against a lot of things. Um, the only thing I wouldn't play her with is with a hyper carry. Um, but if you had two, it would still kind of work too. She's just a very good lane bully. Very good through all stages of the game. Just very immobile and weak. But if you can, you can do a lot of damage and a lot of CC with her. So... Yeah, and also you have the more Nomicon use as well if you have to, which, you know, honestly, um, having that option of being able to go more Nomicon has definitely helped my team in a couple of times. So, for example, the new champion Silas has a lot of healing. Um, too many times I've seen t teammates not pick up Nomicon or um, executioners for the Grievous wins for him. And just having things like that for random champions like that is extremely powerful. So you always need to think about, you know, do I need Morella Nomic on this game? Yeah, and you know, a lot of Ada carries also have Blade of the Ring King and they might enemy might have an enchanter healer. So yeah, it, it is nice to have that option because if you play something like a, a tank, then the only thing you can really run on is Ignite. Soraka and Nami are both tier one right now. Basically, if you want to play an enchanter instead of Q, you're already like looking at one of those two champions. Now with Nami, generally you would pick her if you need more CC and generally you would pick Soraka if you wanted more healing and global healing. Uh, there are a couple of exceptions to that. Soraka is better at silencing things like Nunu and Ramus's uh, engages so the science can stop the Nunu snowball and the Ramus powerball. Um, so if you're against like those sort of junglers, then I would lean towards Soraka. Um, but uh, apart from that, uh, generally Nami for CC if your team lacks it, which honestly is more often not the case. And then Soraka if you feel like your team has enough healing and you want to play an Enchanter um, and have maybe potentially the ult to affect other lanes, it, that is a pretty powerful tool um, if it does get used. So those are my two favorite enchanters right now. And Leona is the best engaged tank, no matter what yellow you're in. If you're looking to play a tank, go Leona, practice her. It will warm you up, especially when you want to adventure to things like Thresh or, or Pike or any other Alistair if you really want to. Um, those It will teach you what to do as a tank to engage in, for sure, 100%. Her ulti is on an extremely long cooldown, a uh, low cooldown, should I say. Her ultimate is on an extremely low cooldown. And um, even if you whiff it, you can then opt in not to engage, which is a bit different than from the other engages where usually when you go in, you have to commit. So there is no way out. So yeah, extremely um, solid champion. Damage is respectable. CC is there for sure. And yeah, the only downside for her really is that she has to take Relic Shield. So yeah, that's about it really. 
on the tier list. I hope this helps you out. There are a few adjustments. So this will hopefully help you through 9.4 and 9.5. I don't think there are too many tape changes coming through to 9.5. Um, I will only update this series of tier lists if I feel there are enough changes to warrant it. I feel like it's now three patches now since the last tier list. I feel like there's enough here to update on. But I want to bring out these videos, um, Not hopefully not every patch. Like I want these videos, you know, when they're out, you know, you know, going to be up to date with the information. And if I don't bring out a video, it means that you're already still up to date with the current information. In honesty, the only big change um, that I felt like I maybe could make a video um, on was the Rakan nerf, but I felt like it was just one champion wasn't enough to warrant everything. But hopefully, this is now updated a little bit more to reflect what's going on in Soda Q right now. I wish you all the best in your season nine climbing, no matter if you're an NA or EUS with the different systems. Um, and if you do want to um, explore more content on my, my channel, um, I have um, gameplay videos from my Twitch channel. Uh, my Twitch channel is uh, twitch.tv slash bizzleberry. Um, I'm live almost every day. I'm having two days off on Thursday and Friday coming up. But apart from that, I'm being live almost every day. Um, uploads include support guides here. Whoa. Yes, this one here. You can see this one. <laughs> my, my Soraka guide and a basic how to play support guide as well. Hit yeah, over 100,000 views on that video, uh, which I'm incredibly grateful for. So hopefully that video has helped out at least some of you guys watching. And yeah, this is this area here is the place to keep up to date on my guides and also gameplay videos on no matter what champions. And I would highly suggest as well, if you scroll down a little bit lower, this, this this series isn't as popular as the guide series, but it is incredibly helpful. These videos are nearly an hour long. You find whatever champion that you're interested in playing, you'll find it there um, on this playlist. So you've got anything from Rakan, Nautilus, Thrash, even the Malzahar game that I've done coaching sessions for. Just because the coaching session was done for one person, there is a lot of information that you'll be able to use there for yourself in your own Soda Q game. So I would highly urge you guys to to watch those if you are a new new player into support or maybe in the lower ELOs and wanting to improve one specific champion um, to up your game in Soda Q. Other than that, um, if you enjoyed this content, if this is your first time here, please subscribe. And um, yeah, if you're able to follow me on twitch.tv slash bizzleberry, it'd be awesome to see you. I'm, as I said, live almost every day. I try and answer as many questions as I can um, relevant to either League or the support, ideally towards the support role of League of Legends. And yeah, take care, guys. Bye.